Okay. Um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we are pleased to have you today uh, in this webinar organized by the Global Entrepreneurship Network for the Global Entrepreneurship Week for Botswana. We are especially pleased to welcome the speakers and you, the audience, and would very much like edX Startups, Tractions, Partnerships, and Stakeholder Engagements. Um, my name is Tawaka Mutabane. I'm an energy engineer and co-founder at Women in Energy, and I'll be moderating today's session. So please feel free to drop your questions in the chat box. We'll be interacting um, during the, the Q&A session. And for those joining in Zoom, I'd kindly like even to keep your mics muted unless you're speaking so as to not disturb the speaker. So without further ado, I would like to introduce our first speaker, Her Excellency Majid Helwig Bote. I hope I'm pronouncing it well, the German ambassador to Botswana and special representative to SADC, who will be giving us today's introductory remarks. Ambassador, the mic is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks you, Taboka, for this uh, kind introduction. Um, I'm actually very happy that I'm able to talk uh, to you again uh, at the Global Entrepreneurship Week. Uh, and we also, and uh, Taboka, we also met on other occasions. Uh, I'm a year old in Botswana now, and last week, uh, last year's Global Entrepreneurship week was one of the first uh, events I attended. So I can see that time is passing. Um, a year down the line, I have more contacts, I know more people. Uh, so uh, let's see um, where we get from there. Um, I actually, I don't want to be too long, but I have like four points uh, to make before uh, I hand over to my colleagues from GIZ and uh, uh, Southern African German uh, Chamber of Commerce. Um, you said I'm the German ambassador, I'm special representative to SADC, and actually SADC uh, is uh, one of the, um, the, the big portfolios we have in our development cooperation here, and this is why I'm sitting here uh, with my colleague uh, Annalene Bremer, maybe you can a little bit wave to the audience. Good morning. Uh, Annalene um, deals a lot with SADC issues, uh, she's the uh, head of uh, cooperation and development at the embassy, and how me to prepare this, this event. Okay, um, let me first of all say that uh, Germans are strong believers in regional integration and in the power of the private sector. We think this is important in Europe as well as in other parts of the world. And the SADC uh, region for us uh, is a case in point. Um, I'm saying this because uh, over the, the years, uh, over the decades, Germany has benefited a lot from being a member state of the European Union. And the European Union is based on four fundamental freedoms, and that is the free circulation of persons, of goods, of capital and services. And these elements are key for people and business uh, in Europe. And in the startup context, uh, I would add another um, important uh, freedom, and that is the free circulation of ideas. The German government has supported uh, SADC for more than 35 years now uh, on economic integration, on industrialization, developing value chains for different products, promoting trade and private investment. And of course, all the countries in the SADC region, including Botswana, have benefited from this in one way or another. I would say that today, um, it is very important to focus on those issues which are shaping the future of the African continent, and that is digital transformation. It is innovation, it is training. So all, for me, they are elements uh, of a viable startup ecosystem. And that brings me to my second point. What is important for startups, in my view, is coaching and its funding. So the digitally oriented private sector, academia, civil society, they all have a role to play as some sort of a knowledge sharing platform and the nucleus of a startup ecosystem. And if they rally together, they can help uh, startups uh, scale and get access to capitals and markets. So the ideal um, 
view of a knowledge sharing and pitching platform would be a cobweb of different institutions, of private and state-run incubators and accelerators, mentors and coaches, VCs, family offices, private and public investors, such as government funds, banks, academia, university, re research institutes. And I would also mention media outlets, because they can all help to make ideas become a reality and to give startups the environment they need to grow and also help them tell success stories. Um, my former post uh, was uh, to work in, in, in Bangalore in southern India, like the Silicon Valley of India. And there was an interesting initiative which was called Your Story. It's like a blog, a platform where startups tell how they became successful. They tell their success stories, hence the name of the blog is Your Story. And it would be great if there was something like this as well in Southern Africa, because the more people share their experience, the easier it is for others uh, to get inspired uh, and take lessons from that. And that brings me to my third point, that's the private sector. I think the private sector is best placed to drive digitization, and the government is the institution which should create the required framework conditions. And by framework conditions, I mean the hardware, connectivity, reliability of ICT services, physical and digital infrastructure, entrepreneurship skills, digital technologies, access to capital. But without the private sector, and I know that the private sector is small in Botswana, uh, I think um, it's very difficult for the ecosystem uh, to really kick off. I know that the, government, uh, the uh, government of Botswana puts a lot of emphasis on digitization and the knowledge-based economy. The president, uh, president Masisi made this very clear in his last uh, State of the Nation address uh, on Monday. But I think it needs more than the national context to kick off. Botswana is a country with a small population, 2.3 million people. That's two thirds of the population of the city of Berlin in Germany. So it's pretty small. And the pool of people who are ready to kick off something uh, is pretty small as well. And the market is small as well. So um, if startups really want uh, to get traction, I think, um, they have to look beyond the borders. Uh, they have to look into the regional environment. And if they do so, I think it'll be possible for them to attract a regional customer base and improve their abilities to scale and also attract investment from regional investors, increase cooperation with companies uh, in the region, taking advantage of cross-border uh, border trade in a regional context, it may be possible to lower the cost of access to digital technology. And after all, what matters for me as somebody from Northern Europe, it is South-South cooperation. So all this is possible in the SADC uh, region if all of you look beyond the borders of your respective countries. Now, my fourth point uh, is about Germany. Germany wants to build bridges between the startup communities uh, in, southern, in the Southern African region. And we want to provide opportunities for founders and creative minds in this region. And if possible, also link startups uh, to the German market. Um, these initiatives are not based in Botswana, but they are based in uh, Namibia and uh, South Africa, namely Startup Namibia and uh, the German Chamber of Commerce. Um, they are based in those countries because traditionally and because of the, the business environments, the links between those countries and Germany are very, very strong. So um, you will learn about learn more about uh, this later from Anna Wamba and Matthias Riefeld uh, from GIZ. But uh, let me tell you already that since last year, GIZ and Startup Namibia are working together with Basecamp to support founders in different ways. And Basecamp intends to attend uh, to extend its activities uh, into the region, uh, namely to Botswana, from beginning of next year. And I personally hope that this initiative will not only be a digital initiative, 
uh, and it will include uh, physical meetings uh, like uh, pop-up camps, boot camps, and maybe other initiatives as well. And hopefully Basecamp will also look for local partners to have more presence uh, here in Botswana. Because it's nice that we all connect uh, through Zoom now and that it's possible to go digital and link people from different uh, continents and also save costs by doing so. But I think at the end of the day, we are all social animals and we want to meet in person. And uh, I think real contact is necessary to move an agenda and uh, to conclude business deals. No German will ever conclude a business deal on a video screen. So um, let me briefly mention the other in initiative uh, which may benefit uh, startups in Botswana. Uh, and it is uh, Alexa Jarrett from the German Southern African Chamber of Commerce who will present this. She will explain what the competency center sourcing is and how it can help uh, startups to connect to German companies. So to sum it up, um, small is beautiful, but it's tricky. And this is always what comes to my mind when I think about uh, Botswana, because the size of the population, I said it earlier, is small. And that's why Botswana has to go the extra mile to make its startup ecosystem shine in the region like the diamonds in the region and beyond. But I'm convinced that the power of creative disruption, which you all know, the networking between regions and industrial sectors, and also cross-pollination of ideas may bring the desired push to its startup ecosystem. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ambassador, for all those wonderful um, introductory remarks um, and the reminder that it's important for us as Botswana to then look beyond the borders if we are to, to build ecosystems and companies that um, have great impact and can grow. Um, I would now like to hand over to Startup Namibia to share their experience with us and um, the, the global, the, the regional outreach they are doing. So Startup Namibia, the mic is yours. Good morning, everyone. Um, Good morning. Before I take off, I have a very quick technical question. I did prepare a presentation. I tried to share the screen, but screen sharing is disabled. Um, is it possible that we enable it? So then I could do my presentation. If need be, I could also go um, um, without presentation, but it would be nice to have the presentation. Yeah, we've sorted it out, so you should be able to to jump on now. Apologies okay, perfect. No worries at all. Um, let me just quickly find it. Um, let me just quickly find it. Um, apologies about this. There we go. Um, please give me a quick sign um, in case you can see my screen. Yeah, we can see the screen. Fantastic. Well, first of all, um, a warm we sorry, hello. Another point of starting. We, we don't see it in presentation mode. We see the... Um... Oh. The better now. Not yet. Hmm. Technology is failing me. Um, because I have it in, in in full screen on my. Yeah, but without losing too much time. Oh, um. Can you still see it, or is it gone? We can see it. I think you can just, yeah. yeah okay, just uh, maybe I'll just um, try to um, make it a little bit bigger and um, present here. Anyways, um, without further ado, my name is Anna. Um, I work for GIZ um, in Namibia, 
And first of all, I wanted to um, thank Her Excellency, um, the German Ambassador Helwig Bötte, for her wonderful um, introductory remark. Your Excellency, if you're ever looking for a career change, I would offer you a job immediately because you know everything what we are trying, you, you are so knowledgeable on the exact things that we need here in Southern Africa. And I'm extremely inspired by your spirit and, and your really, really kind and, and very correct words. Um, my main takeaway is small is beautiful, but it's tricky. And that exactly applies for Namibia as well. Botswana is 2.3 million people. We are about 2.4 million people um, in a country. Um, Namibia is the size of two and a half times the size of Germany. So we have very few people in a vast, vast country, which makes anything from e-commerce to, to doing business um, um, tricky, um, as you said. And, um, and I, yes, yeah, so I'm extremely excited to be here today with my colleague, Matthias, and I will quickly run you through my presentation and tell you a little bit more what we're doing in Namibia with regards to startups. Um, Startup Namibia um, has five big uh, or five outputs, as we call it in GIZ. So one, um, the first big area is infrastructure. In Namibia, we don't have too many co-working spaces um, or hubs or innovation centers for startups. So we are building one. We are actually constructing one. Um, so our headquarters, as the ambassador already mentioned, base camp is in Windhoek. Um, and this, um, at this moment, we are operating from interim offices until our construction is done. But we are providing startups with the physical space um, um, that they can mingle, build a community, and, um, and receive all the support services that they need in one spot. Then this space, this physical infrastructure is offering programs. I'm gonna say a little bit more about programs just now. Um, access to finance and with that, um, again, the ambassador nailed, uh, nailed it when she said the two things that startups really need is coaching and funding. Um, and we need it in equal measures because what we've also seen in other countries and, and other African startup ecosystems that work really well, for instance, Ghana, my colleagues in Ghana say, in Ghana, most of the startups are overtrained and underfunded. So this, this funding part cannot be, um, cannot be emphasized enough. The fourth big area is collaboration. And that's where you can already see collaboration with Botswana um, is in our mandate. Um, we are not doing it alone. We we collaborate with a with a various number of stakeholders from the ecosystem, but not only Namibia, but also regionally and globally. For instance, we have a strong collaboration with Estonia, who is doing um, wonderful work in the area of startups. But we also have a number of collaboration agreements with hubs in Southern Africa, such as Zambia or South Africa. And I hope that Botswana will full, uh, will soon um, follow. And then last but not least, we, we run also, we run a so-called digital transformation center, which has um, the aim to support digital entrepreneurship specifically and strengthen the digital ecosystem in Namibia. I have to say, um, I'm doing, I, I have a number of colleagues in Botswana and we do exchange quite a bit. And from what it seems is that Botswana is doing slightly better with regards to digitalization than Namibia. Um, it seems that you guys are a bit um, ahead of us. So that's why I would love to work more with Botswana in the future, because I think we can learn a lot from our neighbors um, across, ex um, especially when it comes to digitalization. A quick word about the programs that we offer. Um, you will all probably be aware of the different growth stages that a startup goes through from idea to launch stage, growth stage, and scaling or exporting to other markets. So in Namibia, at Startup Namibia and Basecamp, we name our programs Hunt, Hunt for the Right Idea, that's ideation stage programs or pre-incubation, Cook, Cook Your Business Recipe, so that's our classical incubation stage program, um, then Trade, Go to Market, that goes into the direction of growth stage or acceleration, um, Every, um, 
every good um, business needs to pivot at some stage. So we have a specific program for pivoting, which we call reheat, um, or for the ones who are um, familiar with um, with Central European cuisine, um, we have a saying that um, you know a goulash soup only tastes nicely if you reheat it at least four times. And then um, from there we go to export, which is our scaling or investor readiness um, post acceleration program. This is how programs look like. Um, this is the graduation ceremony of one of our female only cohorts um, last year. Um, and then this is also how programs look like. Um, due to COVID, I would say about 90% of our programs have moved online. And um, there is, this is of course, there is something that is lost in online programs, the community building, the, 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 the life interaction and the ambassador is 100% right. We're social animals and it's extremely important to do deals face to face as well. But we need to do with what we have. And there's also a silver lining because online programs, we could really increase our regional footprint in Namibia, but that also allows us to very easily do cross country cohorts. Because if the sessions are online, it's very simple to add a couple of, Nam of Botswanan um, startups to any of our programs. And this is the direction that we also want to go. A word about regional footprint. Um, we are currently having physical spaces in our capital, Vintuk, which is the central part. And then we have, the ambassador already mentioned it, so-called pop-up camps um, in the regions. So what's a pop-up camp? So this is how pop-up camps look like. Um, pop-up camps, we, we took the concept from pop-up stores. So pop-up stores are temporary time-bound little shops that you just draw up somewhere. And then when you feel you're done, you can close them again. So we have movable furniture that we can, we can basically set up shop in any empty space of a hundred square meters. Um, so we, we, we put all our furniture and our screens and, and, and our books and everything on a trailer. We shuttle it to somewhere and then we set up camp for, um, for anything between three and six months. We check out the market. Is there appetite for co-working? Um, how is the startup scene? We're obviously doing a lot of activity there. And if it works very well, which is the example of our pop-up camp at the coast in Svakopmund, that one we've already been running for a year because the co-working space is very much in demand. So we decided to stay. And yes, we could also load furniture on a trailer and shuttle it um, to Botswana. Um, this is also a picture from our pop-up camp in the north. And the reason why I wanted to show this picture is I hope that you all seeing the mom with the baby. And I, I can't emphasize that enough how important it is for us, but in general, to support female entrepreneurship and female founded startups. So in everything that we do, we really, really try to accommodate uh, women, moms, um, and, and female entrepreneurs. So for instance, our physical infrastructure in Vinduk has a little baby or kids room where moms can, if they don't find a babysitter, can at least bring the kids to work and they have um, an environment where they can stay for an hour if they need to have meetings. And then last but not least, um, I mentioned it already, access to finance. We have a slingshot fund. Um, so each year, the, the best performing startups in all of our programs get to pitch at an annual pitch event for a ticket in our Slingshot Fund, which is a um, uh, uh, milestone-based uh, grant funding up to 5,000 euros. And this is, one of our, this is one of our startups after he is very happy to receive um, a 5,000 euro check um, for his business. Um, with that, I'm handing over to my colleague, Matthias, who's going to talk more about the regional initiative. Matthias, I'm clicking the presentation, so you just tell me next if you want the next slide. 
Thank you very much, Anna, and uh, thanks everyone uh, for joining uh, this morning and, and uh, taking the time to listen to us and also to listen to the German ambassador. And also thank you very much for your introduction and your 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 words. Um, that was very inspiring. Um, I will keep it a bit shorter that we also have time for q and I think this is what uh, we're also looking for, uh, especially we as Make IT in Africa. Uh, which is a regional program which is um, commissioned by the German uh, Development Corporation to support innovation ecosystems um, on a pan-African level in Africa. Um, Anna, could you please click the next slide? Mm -hmm. Sorry. Can you see the next slide? Yes, it's working. Thank you very much. Um, mm -hmm. So we are a bit different as a regional program to what um, Anna just told you um, from like uh, from a bilateral perspective. Uh, we as Make IT in Africa um, are existing since uh, 2016. So we are running for quite some time, but only now looking towards also Southern Africa as a region. Um, we started in Kenya and Nigeria as the main spots for um, digital entrepreneurship and, 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 and startups. If you do not look um, if, you do, if you do not look only to, to Southern Africa, but so we started in West and East Africa and they're in close collaboration with um, digital visionaries, so in, uh, innovators uh, like startup innovation enablers and political partners, um, we tend and try to facilitate uh, African innovation ecosystems. Um, really believing in African innovation and creating an environment in which the full potential of African digital innovation can unfold. What does this mean? So we believe in a systemic approach um, looking at different levels and creating an environment where also um, stakeholders from the local ecosystem can drive this innovation that is needed in order to make uh, the de development more effective. If you could uh, click the next slide, please, Anna. Mm -hmm. So no uh, I'm, I'm not seeing it, sorry. I'm no, so sorry. One. So um, we believe in starting to build a strong foundation. This means we always start in the middle. In the middle for us means we collaborate with African change makers who are driving the innovation and entrepreneurial ecosystems, like in, in, in innovation hubs, like entrepreneurship support organizations, but other, also other service providers. Um, and uh, from there on, together we support startups, we support policy making with intermediaries in a participatory process. If we're looking back, this means um, that um, we have a regional approach and together with um, uh, stakeholders from the African continent, uh, we have uh, already a strong um, track record. Uh, next slide, Anna. where we, um, I don't, will not read out the numbers, so I think you can see it uh, on, on, on slide. But what is important for us uh, also to, uh, to complement, especially what Anna and, and colleagues are doing in, in bilateral um, portfolios. This means in the end, uh, over the last years, we supported nearly 500 startups from 26 countries from, 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 from Africa, always on pan-African activities. So we believe in the collaboration, and this is also what the German ambassador said in the beginning, there has to be a connection. And we also do believe in a physical connection and bringing together uh, the right people um, to spark ideas, but also to do less. Uh, I think this is one learning that we had that I also want to share, um, what we always called curated cohorts, uh, by bringing together, doing joint acceleration um, programs with, uh, and, uh, with um, enterprises like Airbus, we did an African Aerospace Accelerator. But the findings that we saw from these um, in interventions, it's like the, the benefit is not only creating the linkages between also startups and established companies, but especially also creating the linkages between the startups in um, having a better collaboration on a, on a business to business level between the startups. And uh, the best learning we saw in this kind of curated cohorts was that um, in the end, the startups were more professional and more specialized um, by reducing what they, what they did offer. And um, bringing together the expertise with other um, startups to complement a service offering. And so there was also an interest um, then towards um, 
established companies. So I think this is a very interesting mix. And this is what we're trying to do is always bring it together um, and uh, to support startups and uh, in a specific sector. But at the moment, um, not in Southern Africa. This is what we're looking at. Um, so with this approach, we could also enable like private funding and uh, the startups that we are supported received over 100 billion of, of follow up investment from private investors. Um, so we as Make IT in Africa do not offer um, 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 a fund for startups. So we try to rather leverage existing uh, funding by investors. And we have a strong network from African in, and uh, international investors um, to uh, invest in the startups that we are also supporting. So we are kind of a matchmaker here. The, um, what I would like to point out, because this is also then um, going a bit in another direction, what Anna just presented, but I think it's very important because if you have a good idea um, and you're not able to, to implement, to scale it um, because of uh, political um, framework conditions that you cannot control, uh, we believe uh, this is a very important uh, factor to look at. And this is why we also worked with our partner governments in the countries and that we're working in at the moment to support so-called startup acts in order to have a better framework and business condition for startups um, that um, there's enough space and the opportunity that ideas can be scaled and that the, that the environment uh, from a political side uh, is provided in order to scale. Perhaps next slide, Anna. I think I have to hurry up a little bit that we still go to this Q&A. So, um, from January 2022, uh, we will be commissioned also to um, work in, in, in your region, so in, 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 in Southern Africa. We are super happy about that. We are never doing this alone, So, but uh, we will work together with uh, Anna and, and the colleagues from Namibia, but with a regional perspective. So everything that I said um, at the moment is uh, what we do in, in West and East Africa. We are looking forward and learning what is already happening in, in Southern Africa, how we can support, how we can complement. And we are, we are open for um, collaboration and uh, also um, very happy to look at Botswana and especially also um, um, to, to other countries in the, in the SADC region to see how this linkage is between startups, but also with innovation enablers and intermediaries and policymakers can happen and can be facilitated through um, the commissioning that we have from the German Development Corporation. So um, the, I think I would leave it here, Anna, um, because my interest is also in really learning and getting the feedback and uh, hearing from the people in the call what their interest is. So perhaps we stop talking here and listen to the crowd. Thank you very much. And thanks for the opportunity to be here and to present. I will stop. Thank you very much, Anna and Matthias, for the lovely presentation. Um, I think we can open it up to the floor now. If anyone has a question, anything they can or they want to ask or anything like that. Yeah, let me kick it off, um, Tavoka. Um, so colleagues, uh, so let me just introduce myself. So Mokezi Benedict Bekere. I'm part of the organizing team. I'm actually the organizer uh, of uh, the Global Entrepreneurship Week Botswana. I look after the Global Entrepreneurship Network chapter of Botswana. Um, its role basically is to put together Botswana's ecosystem into one curated platform. Uh, I believe Namibia has a similar chapter. South Africa has one. Um, and this is the, the whole purpose of, of the vehicle. But I also am a co-founder of a, of a, of a pre-seed accelerator in Botswana, which is focused on early stage startups, basically, who are doing, like just giving them structure at the very early stage, and then obviously supporting them through the point where they're now looking for smart capital, which is either VC capital or angel capital. So I'm happy to just inform you that we are aware of uh, Make It IT Namibia. Uh, it's very exciting to see the work that you guys are doing in Namibia. I've personally been using, at, at Accelerator, been using some of the tools from uh, Make It IT, especially in the sector of ag tech. So I've found your tools to be quite useful. And I know some of your team members like J Josiah from, uh, from, from, from the GIZ team, and we've been having a conversation. So I think the timing is quite perfect because in this, in this grouping, we do have startups 
that are looking to scale in, in the Southern Africa market. And Namibia, as you know, is, is a priority country, Botswana and Namibia, brother and sister. So I must say also that uh, to Anna, I'm quite impressed with the framework in which you put together your startup, your startup programming. I think the ambassador and I have been speaking about this, that there needs to be some form of structure in terms of what incubators and accelerators in Botswana are doing. We, we have over 100 incubators, by the way, in Botswana. Um, and when I say 100, I'm, I'm, I'm talking like really 100, right? But we, we, we don't see the founder, um, the founder KPIs, you know, the, the raising the money, you know, the, them just doing well in the market, going to the market, attracting smart capital. So, they, so I think you are coming at the right time where you can fill in a gap that, that already exists. And, uh, and would be happy to pick on that. And then of course, let me just also say that to uh, Matthias, you know, I really like the fact that you guys are trying to also, you know, break into policy and calling for uh, a startup act. I think if, you, if, if we can find a means of just getting people to understand that a startup is not an SME, right? And an SME is not a, is not a startup. I mean, that could really help a lot of us get the, the, the storyline correctly. And that's why I've been very close to the ambassador because she has a lot of knowledge. And I think we should really have a masterclass between her and the government of Botswana, right? And say, hey, look, go learn from somebody what a startup is. I, I mean, that should be the key thing because we get it, but I, we don't know if the people, the rest of the regulatory people in the environment understand the type of technology that's been built by these young people so that they can be enabled, right? So I think let me pause there for now and say, I'm really, really excited and welcome to Botswana. And uh, we are ready to do business with you. Over to you, Tawoka and the team. Uh, thank you, Makiti, for that. Um, Makiti, I see how you hand up. And then I think the ambassador can speak next. Yeah, um, you can also go first um, if, if you want to. Um, Okay, thank you. Um, I just wanted to react and, and um, also think that it will not be the last time that we speak to each other, I mean, just, uh, just to follow up. Um, I, ju I just wanted to point out also that we, um, that we are currently setting up also a peer-to-peer -peer network between the local, um, local networks. So we just launched it at the Every Labs gathering happening last, last week. Um, so, and there's also the connection that, that we're looking at. So, and, um, we believe also in the power of bringing the ecosystem together and if you're if you're doing that and if there's an interest um in, in also joining this pan-african network um we don't believe that we have the solution right so for, uh, from a german development cooperation we are only there to facilitate so therefore we will we're happy to bring together ASEC, the ghana hub network isn um and, and and others like to learn from each other and also to bring in a bit more um the perspective uh, from, from the others to learn from each other. So on the policy making, I think it's very important uh, also to point out that um, Smart Africa Alliance is doing good work here and we're also collaborating with I for policy on that. Um, so tapping into the movement. But um, we as German Development Corporation or, or GIZ cannot um, um, just do policy making. I just want to point this out, right? So if we if we support on on a policy making process, this is uh, by a request from from the local government if there's an interest. But I think Smart Africa did a great job also in uh, kind of uh, igniting this um, wanna have moment because uh, within the alliance and there is there's the need and starting from Tunisia and seeing what it, it changed in Tunisia and now we have it in, in, in Senegal and more, more countries on the African continent and basically we can provide the information, the benefits and also would be happy to present it uh, if there's an interest and also um, uh, see if Botswana or um, um, uh, policymakers from Botswana would be interesting in also joining this kind of task force and, and that Smart Africa is, uh, is setting up to see also what the benefits are by doing a startup act and looking at an innovation ecosystem and how this uh, could really bring the country forward. Um, and it's, yes, it's different to SMEs. You're totally right. Thank you, Makiti. Um, Anna, you come in now. Um, I think the beauty of uh, a startup ecosystem is that you can't organize it uh, in a, a structured way. 
of course, I mean, you, you need some sort of organization. And I think uh, here in Botswana, the ecosystem is very fragmented. You have bits and pieces of everything, but somehow all these actors, be it the state with the Botswana Innovation Hub, uh, be it uh, local development authority, which can give funding to SMEs, sometimes uh, confusing them with startups, sometimes not. Um, then the private initiatives like uh, the Stand Big Bank uh, Accelerator, uh, it's very fragmented. There is no possibility or there has not been any initiatives to bring them together. And I think um, actually it's not really the role of GIZ to do this because GIZ is also focused on um, working with the government. But you may find this weird when I say it as a government person myself, but that's not how it works. Yeah, you have to give space to different initiatives. You have to think more in terms of like round tables of bringing different interests uh, together and then see who clicks with whom and who can uh, collaborate. And this is, uh, I did a similar thing when I worked in Bangalore, like I was like the focal point bringing all these people together. I had no clue of what they're doing sometimes, but that's how that was the glue to keep them uh, together. And this is exactly what is missing here. And I'm actually very excited about this idea um, to have pop-up camps uh, here. Space is not a problem. Space is never a problem in Botswana. And the Botswana Innovation Hub is a huge area. I think they can give you 500 square meters without any problems. Uh, if the right advertisement uh, is there, then uh, people can go there. But um, I would strongly advise that any initiative should not rely only on the state here, but uh, involve private actors. And in a way, I think uh, Nguana Africa and Mohetsi are somehow um, the ideal partners uh, for startup Namibia, because he has created his uh, startup environment uh, already. And the important thing is sort of to take it uh, to the next uh, level. So um, I'm, I'm making a commitment already. And that is, if you come here with a pop-up camp, uh, we will make it happen and uh, make an effort to get as many as in interesting people as you need. And we will have the kickoff event uh, at the German residence. Wow. Um... Um, this is fantastic, and I'm promising that we will do that. Um, I will. I will, we need to bring your your Namibian colleague also, um, Ambassador Beck. I'm sure he's um, he's gonna like the idea. Um, but yes, let's work on that. I love it. I love the idea. Um, let's get to it. So we 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 will issue you the dates, and then you guys can fly in. Um, and we we've already got the founders that are that are ready to jump in and that, that want to do business in Namibia. So I think just expect that that ambassador, that action is already taken care of, right? So yeah, uh, Tavoka, maybe open up to the to the startups. They want to also just see what they can tap into this uh, interesting outcome from the GEW21, right? Yeah, no, definitely. Um, I think we do have a couple of startups here. If anyone wants to, to add on to anything that was said or tap into to the resources that Anna has given in the chat box. I don't know if anyone wants to say anything now. Yeah, I hear there's a, the, one of the challenges is that we don't have a lot of females in doing tech. I, I picked one of our startups here. Her name is Nomsa. They're doing uh, tech in the artificial intelligence space. You know, Ambassador, I mean, you and I were chatting about this, that there isn't enough females and how do we how do we do that by a stroke of luck i came across this company called Siriti insights right so these guys have already been picked by the japanese so it's so interesting that there are people doing great work in botswana but nobody knows them right uh similar the, the same to another guy the ambassador connected to him he's a Botswana who's doing uh, a fintech in in singapore and raised up to 10 million pula so when the ambassador said to me you're not looking correctly i actually had to look in and the guy is part of our cohort. So Nomsa, maybe let me allow you to jump in and uh, say something about the work that you guys are doing at Siriti 
Um, the ambassador might be aware of some of what your colleague uh, Kakiso does on a Sunday morning in Khaburoni and gets everybody to wake up on Twitter, right? So let's just give you guys the platform. Sure, thank you so much. Um, <laughs> I wasn't prepared to speak today, um, but this is part of the game, I guess. Um, so yeah, we are, myself and Kakiso, I don't know if he's on here. He's got another meeting at 11, so I'm, probably he would have left. Um, uh, the founders of Siriti Insights, we built a solution that was a response to the COVID pandemic um, which was able to detect uh, misinformation and disinformation um, through the power of AI and harvesting data from social media. Uh, what we did in terms of what made us, our solution stand out to the Japanese, um, as mentioned, is that we are teaching this uh, this tool, this AI tool to learn um, not only English, but also Setswana and Kalangan and some of the other languages that are, that are there in the country. Um, so that's what we, 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 we are working on right now. It's still at prototyping state. We're almost done with it and we anticipate to be able to launch it um, in the first quarter of 2022, if not April. Um, and what we want to do more than anything is to be able to scale it to the rest of the continent. But from a business perspective, um, what we want to be able to sell it as or position it as is uh, a brand listening tool. So brands and businesses, companies, even organizations like um, GIZ can you know, have clear insights on what people are actually perceiving their brand as and what they think of their brand that is unfiltered, but also because um, a lot of AI tools only learn or understand English, but we want to be able to, be able to teach it all the languages of the world and, and license it and scale it to the rest of the world so we can capture the beauty of language and adding to business objectives, adding to brand objectives, adding to organizational NGO objectives by not leaving any voice unheard. Yeah, and Nomsa, you are currently raising, right? You are raising capital, right? You want to see out the number? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, um, I, I don't want to say out the number right now. I think for now, that's we can be do that offline one on one. Um, but our priority right now is is like I said to get it to a point where we have um the testing data in the Botswana market. We are also looking for mentorship in terms of go to our go to market strategy, um, for for when we launch because it's a bit difficult as a tech solution. Things that are not very common in Botswana to know how to navigate the market and how to you know get the buy-in from the people that need to give us the buy-in. So um, it's not just about money for us. We're also looking for for support in in form of mentorship, advisory, uh, wherever we can get it. Oh, awesome stuff. Um, thank you, Namsa, for jumping in. Uh, not sure if anyone else has anything they'd like to add, ask. Perhaps just a reaction from my side, if I may. <clears throat> um, I, I think this topic is super interesting, and I just wanted to um, um, to throw in that we also worked uh, with the Mozilla Foundation uh, and the Common Voice Project uh, in order to, uh, to think about like how to collect data for um, um, also other languages or native languages. Uh, we did this in Rwanda, for example. Um, to, to think about how to build artificial intelligence, but not exclude, uh, not from kind of a perspective that only English or France, uh, French is, is, is supported. Um, there, there were some learnings, and uh, if this is of interest for you, um, uh, we, we would be happy to share and connect with the colleagues who were doing that. Yes, please. That would really be amazing. Great. Okay, great. Um... Taking that, there are no more questions. I think maybe let's jump on to the next speaker and then we can have another Q&A session. Or well, Marquez, you wanted to say something? Yeah, no, we, we, we are fine. I just thought Ronald wants to talk about how the pop-up camp idea around clean tech uh, I, and also yourself. Uh, I think like, you know, I, I, I like this idea of pop-up camp. I think we should even like tweet about it um, because I think that's the way we activate um, at kickoff in Botswana. So maybe Tawoka, a little bit mm -hmm. insights from you uh, on the women, on, on the energy sector, like the, the, the sectors, just so these guys understand our appetite in terms of what's happening in Botswana. Because people just know like there's a lot of insects and animals in Botswana. So maybe we need to give them perspectives. Like we also have a lot of sun, by the way, Matthias, all year round. Um, and the sun is just like being wasted. Like there's no innovation around that. So Perhaps that could be some a deep dive that we just want to chat with, just to make use of the time and the the, the experts that I have from the women in energy.
strategy and their thinking. Yeah, that will get to you. Okay, um, but I wasn't prepared to speak on it, but we've definitely been talking with um, more Katie and Ronald about having some sort of um, activity to bring together startups, uh, young companies within the energy and clean tech area, agri-tech as well, to basically take advantage of the resources that are freely available, like Katie like said, um, whether it's solar, uh, biomass, yeah, basically that. Yeah, There's and, and comp comp compost, compost, that, so right? And yes, co and composting. Yeah, because I, I think the ambassador knows about this. Like, we don't know what happens to all the trash that comes out of my house every morning. I don't know what happens to it. Like, the, I have a, these guys it's that come every, yeah, they come every every week and they take the trash and I don't know what, what happens with it. And I think somebody is just telling me, I think this, there's a great opportunity to build business. Like, the food we eat in the restaurants, we don't know where it goes. But when we speak about, like, tapping into clean tech, what are we talking about? So I think for me, this is yes, like to do something. Yeah, something practic as practical as that, yeah? Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, like you said, we, we were working on something, so we'll definitely tap into what you guys are doing at um, Make It Africa and GIZ Namibia and talk to you guys about having some sort of pop-up camp next year. Ronald, I don't know if you want to add on to that. I uh, always love uh, adding on to stuff. Uh, so um, we're looking at um, we're looking at. Uh, oh yeah, Ronald. Work. Ronald, maybe you should introduce yeah. yourself properly so we know who you are. You remember the ambassador? Nobody knows everybody. So guys, please just properly introduce yourself so that we we know like who you are. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, buddy. Just start again. Okay. Uh, so I'm Ronald. Um, so I'm Ronald Mahomani, and I've been working with Mike Getty for a long time. Uh, so uh, I've been working with Mike Getty for a long time uh, through Mwana Enterprises and so on and so forth. When still, it was still Mwana Enterprises back in the day. Uh, and I got interested in the, in the nuclear game. So I'm a computational experimental nuclear physicist uh, by profession. And uh, uh, after doing that for a little while, I decided, okay, let's go into um, into what we originally did, which was starting up with startups and SMEs and all that other beautiful things. And um, my my concern, and uh, uh, and I've raised this concern a number of times, especially in the Sadek region, uh, was energy and uh, how to store energy, how to move around energy, how to make it uh, more cost effective. Because whether we like it or not, all these beautiful startups in tech would need a power base. Um, uh, so me and Merketi had uh, a couple of conversations with a couple of our partners around the world and looking at how to recycle uh, in the nuclear sector, recycle in uh, within the coal sector. I mean, there is uh, uh, clean coal and so on and so forth. But I think um, Tabuka and the team have done a great job in, in getting startups, uh, especially in the energy sector. Uh, especially in, in, in the Sadiq region, because uh, there was absolutely nobody there until Dawuka showed up a couple of months ago. And we've just been trying to do work around how to get the Sadiq, uh, the Sadiq region energy and uh, sustainable energy uh, and um, green energy. Uh, but again, this, this is going to be a major factor later on. Um, as we are uh, moving towards uh, getting these startups uh, on on base, uh, it's it's. I mean, I know that it's 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 a it's a big infrastructure problem, and I'm I'm very excited to to know that uh, we are trying to work with policymakers to make it possible for our startups to work, uh, uh, creating an ecosystem that uh, they are able to flourish. Uh, so I mean. Uh, um, we're not actually uh, prepared with a, with a nice uh, show slide for everybody to kind of see, but uh, it is an exciting time. I think even for Tabuk, I think uh, she, she would have a, uh, a better understanding of what's happening on the ground in Botswana. And uh, yeah, and so I, obviously she would have more pointers. So I think she, yeah, should be the greatest person to close this off. But thanks, eh? Yeah, no, definitely. Like you said, we weren't prepared today to like 
give the pointers of what exactly we're trying to do, but uh, I think the whole point of this is building the network, knowing who to talk to next. So as we are preparing, as we're working towards um, building something and including more startups and, and um, tech companies into to building the static ecosystem around energy and clean tech, we'll definitely keep in touch with with Make It Africa, with Startup Namibia, with the, the German embassy. It's a conversation to continue. So um, I think for the sake of time, maybe let me hand over to the next uh, presenter and then we can have another discussion after that. So um, if we could have the South African German Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Oh, hi, Alexa. Hi, good morning. Um, good morning. As I already said, I'm Alexa Gerard. I'm the regional coordinator here at the Southern African German Chamber of Commerce and Industry. I'm very happy to be here today. So thank you for inviting me. Thank you also to Ambassador Harry Butter. She made a very nice, um, you made a very inspiring speech this morning. And also to the GIZ team and Make It Namibia. I will definitely, or Make It, Make it Africa, I will definitely get in touch with you as well because we've got some startups here in South Africa that would be very interested in your programs. Um, but let me share my screen today about what I wanted to talk to you about today. There you go. Can you all see that? No? Yes. Okay. Can you see that? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, okay, so I'm here today to tell everybody about, or you guys about the South, about what we do um, in the Southern African region and also about the competence center sourcing and the other competence centers we've got. We've also got one for sustainable energy. So here, that's a big, big subject here. Um, and then also what projects we're currently running and how that could be in a, of assistance to all of you. So just a bit of background about the chamber network. Um, in Germany, there are a number of chambers. They're all called IHKs. Um, and they all manage the, the business activities within Germany. And then you've got AHKs, which are German Chambers of Commerce Abroad. Um, now, the Southern African German Chamber of Commerce is such a chamber, and we are part of a network of 100. We are in 92 countries and 140 locations worldwide. So we basically foster bilateral trade between Germany and all these regions internationally through our networks. So in terms of our chamber, the Southern African German Chamber of Commerce and Industry, we serve 12 countries with our five offices. We have an office in Johannesburg, that's our head office, that's where I'm sitting. We have an office in Durban, as well as in Cape Town. And then we've got an office in Maputo, Mozambique, and in Lusaka, Zambia as well. In Botswana, we work very closely together with the German embassy, and in Namibia as well. And in Namibia, we also work together with the GIZ and the Business Corporation Desk there. In Zimbabwe and in Germany, we have representatives. So we kind of cover the whole region with, with uh, all our offices and all the people that we work with. Um, in sub-Saharan Africa, we also like to, you know, let cover the whole region, not just Southern Africa, but the whole of uh, SSA. And we do that by having close collaboration with the other chambers in those regions. So in Kenya and Tanzania, in uh, Ghana, Angola, and Nigeria. We as a chamber, we are one institution. We have, however, three functions. So we basically set up in three pillars. We, have a, we are a membership organization. We have about 600 members uh, in our chamber. And uh, that's basically our network that we stand on and we are the collective strength of our members, so to say. We also are the official representation of the German industry abroad and in Southern Africa specifically. And then lastly, we are service providers for, for companies that want to enter markets. So we assist German companies or Southern African companies enter into the various markets that we cover through various service offerings like address searches, business partner searches. We organize delegations, we can do market studies, um, and we also help companies um, join trade fairs. We source trade fairs for them, help them set up stands at trade fairs. We are involved in training and so on. Um, I'm gonna go a little bit into our competence centers here. So at the chamber, we decided to move away completely from the, from the normal department structure, for example, like address search is one department and market study would be another department. And we decided to rather set all our focus and, set, and focus all our skill sets and our service offerings into competence centers. 
Now these competence centers are sector-based and they allow customers or contacts to have direct contact and immediate contact to their relevant sector. Uh, this includes sector-specific information as well as sector-specific networks. Um, we have about eight competence centers at the chamber. The first one I'm mentioning here is sustainable energies, as this is also very important uh, for Botswana. As you said, you have a lot of sun there. Um, we actually, this competence center is very active in Botswana and we regularly um, organize delegations, business partner searches and so on in, in Botswana. I will tell you a bit, now, a bit about a delegation we are managing in the next two weeks in this sector um, towards the end. So you can also get involved there if you're, if you're interested. Then we have a competence center mining and mineral resources. They are also very active up until the DRC in the Southern African region and water management. Um, then water management, um, just as a side note, is also very interesting in, in the startup sphere and the tech sphere at the moment. I know there's a company in South Africa that produces a product that actually um, gets the water from the atmosphere and makes drinking water out of that. So it's a very interesting topic in, in Southern Africa because drought is very big here. So it's, it's definitely a, um, a sector for startups and for tech specifically. Then we also have competence centers for food and agriculture, as well as waste management and recycling that was also mentioned earlier. And then industry and the industry competence center is a little bit more complex as it covers a few sectors, it's not just one. But one of the major topics that we that we are interested in in this competence center is the industry 4.0. We also have a working group um, which is involves, we've involved our member companies, we've involved um, public public stakeholders that are, that are, for example, the CISA are in South Africa. Um, and we also invite other companies from the EU business sphere in Southern Africa to join. So this is also maybe very interesting for tech startup companies to be a part of this working group. Then we have health. Health actually does fall under the competence center industry. We are ever very active in this market and that's why I've, I've listed it here separately. Then another um, very important competence center within our chamber is training. This is one of the most up and coming, very uh, interesting competence centers to be involved with. Um, we have CSR as one of the pillars that this competence center covers, but the biggest, the biggest impact this competence center has is through its dual vocational training program. Now, um, for those of you who don't know what dual vocational training is, it's, it's a German-based concept. And basically, students get employed by companies as interns. They then get to work at that company and get practical experiences for and within various sectors and various areas of the company for four days of the week. And then they go to school for one day of the week and get theoretical knowledge that way. Uh, it's, an, it's a two-year program. And they get, uh, at the end of it, they get a, a, a certificate that's valid in South Africa as well as Germany as internationally recognized. We do this in business administration as the CATS program. We also have a program for mechatronics and logistics. Uh, we are currently rolling out one for agriculture as well as shipping. Um, in terms of regional reach for this training, we are currently the, mainly in South Africa. We have, however, rolled it out to Namibia. We are also currently doing feasibility studies and business cases and seeing whether we want to roll it out to Mozambique as well as Zambia. Um, and we are open to roll it out um, across Southern Africa because yeah, there's a lot of growth potential in this competence center. And then the last competence center, and I'm going to go also a little bit more into this one is sourcing. Um, the ambassador mentioned it earlier in, my, in, her, in her introduction, but this competence center, uh, I'll talk about it just now. Let me just quickly base, talk to you about the slide first. Um, we are also, uh, representatives of different, so we are representatives of the German industry as a whole, but we also represent various states in Germany. And two of these we also represent in Southern Africa as a whole, not just South Africa. And these are Baden-Württemberg and Thuringia. The reason I'm mentioning this is because Thuringia specifically is very into health, but also very into digitaliz digitalization and startups. And uh, we actually have an MOU between Thuringia and Western Cape to promote digitalization and tech startups. Um, in the sphere. And so this could definitely be expanded, possibly, if there would be any interest um, in this. Um, then the competence center sourcing. So this competence center is our newest competence center. We only started it last year in November. Um, but then the reason we created it is to be, uh, to, we, 
I mean, to have more trade and more interest to get products from Southern Africa into Germany. So not just from Germany to Southern Africa, but to get products, Southern African products to be exported into the German uh, the value chains, into the German supply chains. Um, how do we do this? We do this through various tasks. We provide, uh, analyze and provide market information. We provide a network and a cooperation platform. So we unfortunately, as an NGO ourselves, we cannot provide funding, but we do provide a network. And we like to, um, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, especially this competence center is very close to my heart personally, because I am South African and the region itself is very important to me, but it also is very important to the chamber as a whole. And therefore we really, um, we really try and push it. We support in finding European business partners for local companies and associations. So if a local company comes to us and says, I want to export this product to Germany, please help me. We do that. We try and find the associations that they can start with. We try and find possible off takers in Germany, and we try and find a network that they can get into in Germany to try and promote their products. We also offer consulting services on market entry. We help with trade fairs, as mentioned before. We help with supply chains, financing and promotion opportunities. Uh, like I said, we can't finance ourselves, but we do try and find other financing opportunities for companies. We also organize events in the field of sourcing, for example, export marketing events, trade fair workshops, export competitiveness workshops, and so on. Um, yeah. Projects that we are currently working on and that we worked on this year in sourcing and which also involved Botswana was in June, July, we did a virtual trade fair pitch. This was quite exciting. Um, we got about we got about 80 applicants for this from the whole of the Southern African region, including Malawi, Madagascar, Mauritius, Botswana. We had them all because um, it wasn't sector. It wasn't sector specific. It was all open. And the top companies were then invited to take part in this virtual trade fair ground. Um, and they were then called to pitch their products and their companies to a, a jury. Um, and then the top participants have now been chosen to join into a, a trade fair preparation program. And they will then eventually, depending on their sector, be invited to join a, a pavilion at a trade fair in Germany, at a physical trade fair. We at the moment are getting a team together to work to send uh, delegates from Southern Africa to the Grüne um, Wochen in Berlin. In Berlin. It's a green wheat, it's a food and agriculture kind of um, trade fair. Uh, then a very nice program that I'm currently working on is Green Tech Innovation, and this might be of also of interest to you uh, as startups in Green Tech. We were looking for products in the Green Tech sphere, companies in Southern Africa that have created their own innovative product solutions, um, and we wanted to see to, to then try and promote them to be exported to Europe. So what we're doing is we're, we're trying to put them on a platform called Leverest. It's a B2B sourcing platform, B2B platform. Um, we will then market this platform. We will then uh, try and find matches. So we will also contact German companies directly and try and match German companies with these Southern African companies. And, um, and then they will also get coaching and training on how best to enter the German market. So this is quite an, uh, quite an exciting project that we're currently working on. Um, then we also did, we were part of the Automotive Congress in Zwickau in Germany this year, mostly from South Africa, because South Africa is big in, in automotive. Um, and we're also going to be hosting a delegation from, from Chemnitz from the same area in Germany to South Africa next year. We help with sourcing inquiries from German buyers. So if a German company comes to us and asks us, look, I'm trying to find this specific part from Southern Africa, please find it. We find it for them and we connect them to the, to the Southern African company. Um, we are planning on, or we are waiting for the contracts, but we are, we are in progress of creating a B2B sourcing platform. This will allow our members and companies within the Southern African region to promote their products on a platform, and we will try and match them with German off takers. Again, similar to Leverus, but it will be our own one. Um, and then it will also be linked to a training program for Southern African companies linked to the, in Germany, they've got a new, um, Chair, uh, Supply Chain Due Diligence Obligations Act, and we will be training Southern African companies on how this affects them if they want to um, feed into the supply chains from German companies. Um, and then last but not least, we also offer sourcing consulting days. Uh, these next two slides are just added in here for companies that want to enter the European market or German market. This might be quite interesting to you or for you. 
Um, this page, Access to Markets, is, um, is a market entry website. So you can actually go on there and it gives you product by product information on tariffs and taxes, customs procedures, rules of origin, product requirements, and so on. So it gives you all the information that you need if you want to enter the German market. It's, and it's active for all EU countries. So it's, it's a very um, nice resource to use. And then these are also a B2B, uh, B2B match, uh, matchmaking B2B platform, sorry. Um, so one of these is Leverest. This is the one that we've linked to that green tech innovation program, but there's a whole lot that you can look up on, you can register yourself onto and to try and get um, more exposure to the German and European markets. Um, and then my last slide is about that delegation. I did mention it a bit earlier, but we, um, so next week, we are hosting a fact-finding mission for buyers and multipliers from Southern Africa, including Botswana. We've got some Botswanan companies there as well in the field of mining and raw materials. Uh, this unfortunately was organized as a virtual event, but uh, in normal times, we would have actually taken these companies to Germany and taken them to meet companies in Germany to uh, find possible collaborations. Um, another interesting delegation that we're doing in, on the 22nd, from the 22nd to the 26th, is um, a, a virtual business delegation also in the field of sustainable energy. So the topic of the delegation is self-supply mini grids with storage in Botswana and Namibia. And these companies listed here, EIB, New Energy, Yandalux, and et cetera, they are all part of this delegation. So um, we have not completely filled the slots for B2B meetings yet. So if any of you are interested in meeting with any of these companies or want to take part in a conference or or just be involved in some way, just let me know. I can send you the invitation. I can send you the program. Um, yeah, and if you have any, if you need any information from our competence centers or how we can help in any way, just contact me. Um, I'm always available. And that's me. Okay. Um, thank you, Alexa, for that. The lovely presentation. I particularly like like the, the last slide. I saw solar cooling there and got excited because that's my <laughs> current um, research area. <laughs> so um, I'll definitely keep in touch and see how I could maybe attend or, or know more about the companies that you just talked about. Um, yeah, just, send any, just, just send me an email. I'll send you the program as well as the invitation. You can take part in the conference. It's open to everyone. It's free of charge. So okay, no, definitely do that. Um, I don't know if there are any questions from the audience. I just briefly had a technical error and my computer just shut down. So I'm a bit, I'm a bit flustered right now, but uh, is there any question from the, the audience? Anyone wants to add something, ask, please feel free to do so. Yeah, let me, let me unlock the conversation for, for my team members. <clears throat> You know, it's, it's always a great opportunity to get support at the embassy level. These are not unique conversations that happen. I think that's a message I can give to entrepreneurs. They should know like the whole uh, startup and embassy engagement is a new thing. So please make the best use of it because these are normally government to government instruments, right? That's why I said, we are trying to create a new instrument for early stage financing. So it starts like this. So. But uh, Alexa, thank you so much to learn that you guys are already doing something. I'm particularly interested in what you're doing in the, with the Western Cape government. And again, this, this goes back to what uh, Ambassador Majad said to me, like, I think as Botswana's ecosystem, we need to closely look at what's happening in the region and replicate, like copy and paste if we can, right? And localize, right? Yeah. Because that, that's the best way in which we can innovate with besides just trying to break the things apart, experiment and do things that were done already in 1994. So maybe if you could highlight for us the opportunity that for, from the chamber perspective in terms of tech startups, because we in our cohort, I mean, we have companies that are building in tech, in, in, in ed tech, agri tech, clean tech, and a, a little bit of fintech. But the, the outlook of the region is not so clear for them. But then obvious also how they leverage the European uh, market in Germany itself, right? Because I've never been in Germany. I, I don't know like how, how huge the market is for African businesses, particularly maybe technology businesses, if you could, we could zoom it down to that. But of course, if, if there, there's a broader outlook for what I call brick and mortar services, perhaps you could speak on that. 
And then definitely to zoom it down, I think to the centers of excellence, you know, I think we need to have this dialogue happen a lot more, particularly with our state incubators and accelerators. I mean, I don't know if you know this, but when you speak competency, you, you, you speak in something that I know is in the DNA of the German uh, economy. Uh, and mm -hmm. a country like Botswana has 40% 40, 40 of our youth are unemployed. And it's sad because these are not like simple people that just walked out of uh, their home in their village. We're talking about young people who are like Taboka, who've got a degree, but they are just not able to be competent enough to contribute to the economy. And that's why we probably don't mm -hmm. have like a, a private sector except a government, right? So I wonder though how in the sectors of water management, I mean, I'm tired of always seeing a guy knock at my gate here and tell me he's here to measure how much water I used. I mean, the other day I got a guy telling me I'm owing 4,000 pool. I didn't even know like how, how I get to a point I use. But I think this is an opportunity to create tech solutions. Like then obviously also mm -hmm. in terms of just the frustration with the energy. I just told you again, like, I get a, a truck coming every week and I don't even know where they take these things. And I think there's an opportunity there for, how do we simply put it out with places like the Botswana Innovation Hub or whoever else is supposed to create the mindset around seeing the opportunity. I mean, I can't do it alone, but I'm looking at a simple way in which we bring in competency centers around training, around um, you know food and agriculture, around water, right? Because we're telling young people to go farm, but there's no water. Like other people tell you, there's no water in Botswana. Like, how do you how do you bring in tech to make that possible? Uh, and I also just want to conclude by saying, for those in the energy sector, I mean, in the group we've got a, a young guy developing coding. I used to run SAP's initiative for coding. So I'm keen on like for training for guys doing education. Do they understand that if the school doesn't have like power or there's no electricity, the computers don't function. So this is mm -hmm. opportunity. So I'm wondering how we really practicalize this so that it gels in and make things work. Yeah. All right. Thank you so for that. I, I think starting starting off with that uh, MOU in the Western Cape with his tech startups and digitalization. I mean, I was actually talking to my colleague the other day. There's a uh, you know, in South Africa, we, they developed some startup developed with pen because in South, you know, crime is a big thing in South Africa. So, uh, in the ambulances, they steal everything. So the 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 paramedic can't have an iPad and make notes, which can be sent to the hospital because it would get stolen. So there's a pen that they then write on paper with. So they write use the pen, they write on normal paper, but still that whatever they write gets then transmitted to PC uh, off site. So the pen wouldn't get stolen because that's not the iPad and, and the guys who want to steal, they don't want paper, so they wouldn't steal anything, right? So, and that, but that's a very specific South African solution. So I think the start is to get a, a dialogue and this is probably also where, where the GRZ and so on gets in, is how do you, first of all, uh, adjust these product concepts if you want to get into Germany, from here to Germany, how can they use this in Germany? And then you need to contact a chamber like ours to see how do I get access to the German market? And then we can put you in touch with various institutions or, or various companies directly. There are various also startup, um, startup innovations and startup competitions that are running from Germany that often get us involved. Um, and then, you know, we search for companies. So the bigger our network is, so the bigger, if you guys come to us and say, we are here, we do this and this and this and this, and the bigger our network is, the bigger we can then um, give, the more exposure we can give you at the end of the day, yeah. And then in terms of water, water management is, is, is really more about that tech, to get tech, how do we get water to, to areas of drought? How do you make sure that they have water? And that's, that's the whole idea behind the competence center. And that's, I mean, it's a huge thing in Southern Africa. And it's all real drought tech, yeah. Maybe the ambassador wants to say something <laughs> around this issue of water and the opportunity for startups. Now, I'm not really an expert on water management, honestly speaking, but um, uh, I think the, 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 the topical uh, subject uh, for uh, Botswana and maybe the region uh, have been mentioned. I mean, it is water, uh, it is energy, uh, maybe it is also agriculture, because agriculture, it's, somehow agriculture is, agriculture is never sexy for young people. So nobody wants to work in this area. 
Um, but uh, if there's a possibility to link it to digital tools, I think then uh, then we can talk. Mm -hmm. Then uh, there is an opportunity to to get it better. And in the water management, yes, uh, I mean it's obvious for everybody. Um, but uh, I think this is an area where there is also um, a lot of collaboration between state institutions needed because this is nothing um, where, where startups can, uh, they can provide ideas, but it is important to roll something out. Yeah, and um, I actually wanted to make uh, another point. Uh, I think uh, all the information uh, which uh, Alexa provided is fascinating, it's interesting, but sometimes I wonder how does information reach the people who have an interest uh, in specific areas? Uh, I mean, I was thinking about this uh, uh, market, uh, digit virtual market virtual exploration market. trip um, on energy. Um, we are organized, uh, which will take place in Botswana in two weeks' time. Um, we are always thinking about uh, like traditional companies um, to give the information to, to interest in these things. But maybe we should, I mean, change our thinking a little bit and not only reach out to the usual suspect, to the few usual suspects we have, but provide this information um, um, to people like uh, uh, Tabuka, uh, to a, a wider startup community. And then whatever, they make of it it's their business but i think we have to think about how to provide information to the startup community we are not responsible for what they're doing with it whether they participate or whether they don't but uh, how to how to get this done that the information you have uh, alexa uh, we have at the embassy i'm also getting info on these challenges in northland westphalia and baden-württemberg and 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 how to send it out to the community. I think this is something we should all think about a little bit. I agree, if I can add to that. And I think that's why a dialogue like today is so important because then we can, we've now got the contacts to the right people that we can then put, in, put, again, put into our database. Because the bigger our network, the bigger the chances of exposure. Yeah. Yeah, I think my colleague Tawoka might have just, yeah, Tuso, you've been on the call, you're in the education space. I was telling Ambassador about the great startups we have. Do you wanna just maybe give it a minute? Um, well, um, I was listening to Ava uh, because I think uh, our, our situation is the same uh, here in Botswana, looking at uh, both culture and, uh, and, and the economy. So. I was hoping from our side because we oh too so uh, uh, sorry to say and we are uh, pretty commercial. Sorry, I was Tuso, hoping that you maybe just uh, introduce is, yourself? Uh, an opportunity for us to uh, maybe uh, try to collaborate and um, and stress test our our products because I mean obviously if we think about uh, you know Africa to be as one then I think this is the opportunity for us to see. If we have a product like uh, the one that we have here, uh, if there's an opportunity, or uh, maybe, maybe just to try with one school uh, so that we can uh, validate um, what we are doing, if it's fit for the market. So uh, I think if there's an opportunity for that, we would really, really love to do that because we, we are almost at a, a pre-commercialization. Pre so we have done all the proof of concept and so far we've got about um, 15 public schools here in Botswana, I think that is enough to um, to validate our product. So if there's an opportunity uh, in Namibia where we can uh, maybe stress test our product, I think that would be really, really, really good for us. Yeah, sorry, Tuso. I think you forgot to introduce yourself and who you are. I know you, but I don't think the colleagues know you. <laughs> if you can just maybe do that. Uh, my name is Tuso Tusise. I'm the co-founder of Classmate. Uh, I'm here with Zeno, is my uh, my partner. So we are in the uh, education space. We are trying to disrupt education. We all know that uh, for 100 years, uh, uh, education has always been the same. So uh, post-COVID, we came up with a solution uh, where we wanted to break the walls between uh, 
when, when students are at home and when students are at school. So we have seen a lot of traction um, during COVID-19 where uh, our country was not in a position to, to deal with the situation, but uh, we have seen uh, about 30,000 students in almost two weeks, uh, you know, really getting into our platform, which we offered it for free by that time to, as, a, as a way of trying to support uh, the government initiative. So um, we are at a pre-com uh, uh, status. So we are looking for uh, mentorship. We are looking for, you know, scaling out uh, to other countries uh, such as Namibia, where they also have like the same, um, you know, the same environment. We, we've done a lot of researches around, uh, you know, um, countries in Southern Africa. But we, when you look at uh, the outcomes, it looks like, you know, it's one size fit all for the, uh, when, you, when you talk about um, educational uh, status in here. Yeah, thanks a lot, uh, Tuso. I was just gonna say, Ambassador, before COVID, nobody ever trusted that people can have a conversation over video, right? Uh, and I think this is what Tuso is doing in the schools in Botswana, right? I think for the first time, people can actually trust that a teacher can sit where he's sitting in his house and teach uh, 40,000 kids in a, uh, in, a class, in a school, right? So uh, this is the type of stuff that these guys are doing. Yeah, but because we're pressed of time, I'm gonna ask Tawoka to just summarize for us uh, and to ask the speakers to give their, their last uh, action steps uh, out of this. Um, yeah, uh, but uh, I think that's and it. Before from, we yeah. close up, we, we have a hand from Hannah. Y yes, hi. Um, I just wanted to say that um, um, what the previous speaker just said about testing cross-border, I think that that is where that is why I see a lot of potential also. Um, and together with Make IT, we can really do that. So um, I also wanna sort of um, put, put out an open invitation. If any startup from Botswana wants to come and test um, in Namibia and you guys need some sort of a, of a launch pad. So if you don't have contact, like contact me really. Send, I've, I've put my email in the chat. Write me an email, say we're interested. Um, this is what we need. We need, I don't know, um, we would like to speak from anyone, from investors to business partners to whatever, or we just need a crowd to test our product on. I will do the utmost to help you because um, that's part of our job. And we would really like to foster this, this connection because I'm not doing it because I'm such a nice person. I'm a very nice person, but I obviously want to sort of foster this collaboration into the future where in if I have a startup in Namibia who wants to break into the or test into the Botswana market then we could you know exchange and butter trade that and say okay I can hook you up for instance we have a number of um, edutech startups in Namibia as well um, and um, I can connect you with um, like-minded people with the sector etc so that invitation, I really am very, very serious. You have my contact details. If you need anything of that sort, just push up an email and um, I'll be there for you. Yeah, there we go, Anna. So just to say, to take it to action, uh, as quick as next week, we can have a round table with the cohort that we have uh, who are thinking of scaling. And I think scaling is exactly that. So I think we'll, if we get your calendar, we'll block a time for a group uh, session from you. And then directly just from there, we can jump on the one-on-one. -on -one. So I think that one is already a tick, uh, a tick on that. Great, great. I'm looking forward to it. All right, thanks for that, Anna. I think you summed everything up well in terms of like action items and um, what can and should be done after this. Um, like you've said, I think contacts have been shared. Uh, those that haven't, I think we can all get that from Moketi and continue the conversation and build the network from here. The potential is there. I think it's just to tap into to, to the resources and the networks that have already been built. So um, in terms of action items, Anna has covered everything well. So thank you, everyone, for attending. Uh, we look forward to, to keeping in contact with everyone and seeing where we can take the, 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 the networks that have already been built. So thank you everyone for attending.
Yeah, thank, thank you, everybody. Don't forget the hashtag uh, GEW2021 uh, on Twitter. And uh, please uh, note that this session has been recorded on the Global Entrepreneurship Week Botswana Facebook page. So if you go there, you will find it. I also understand the German embassy, Haburoni, is actually live streaming this, right? I told you we're breaking and creating new instruments. So please go there, like their page, and tell your friends to go and listen to this recording, right? And uh, share with yeah. fellow leadership and everybody else who needs to learn from what the young people in the country are thinking as solutions. And of course, Taboka from Women in Energy, we are putting you in the spotlight, the future leaders of Botswana, yourselves and your team. So we thank you sincerely for coordinating this session. Alexa from the Chamber of Commerce, we are gonna take you to action uh, in advising those that sign MOUs, that means cities and towns in Botswana, to sign smart partnerships around the sectors that could benefit the economy. And of course, the Making IT team, the tools have been availed. We are keen to collaborate. We will take you to action no later than January to make something happen in Botswana. Ambassador Majid, you remain a key inspiration to the nascent but emerging startup ecosystem in Botswana. I want to sincerely thank you for your mentorship. And I know that you and I, We've, 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 we've not met physically, right? We've just met on video, I think, yeah. So, and this is the power of platform. This is the power of software as a service. So for your direct mentorship to the work that I've been able to do, I personally appreciate you. On behalf of the ecosystem, it's all about global networks. New capital is connecting, making things work. So let's build the economy in Botswana. Let's build the, the region. So on behalf of the Global Entrepreneurial Week, Thank you for making the one hour 30 minutes and the sessions continue as per schedule um, as shared. So on behalf of the week, goodbye. And uh, thank you, Taboka and the team. Bye, bye. and bye everyone. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. bye. And thank you, the entrepreneurs. How do I forget the entrepreneurs? Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for making time. Thank you, Tussaud. Thank you, classmate. Thank you, everybody, for making time. Bye-bye.